Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Nancy McDermott. This is Nancy's Table. It's Saturday afternoon in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I'm so delighted that you're here with me today. It's, it's just such a treat. And actually, maybe you're here with me tomorrow or next week because you can always come back and watch these later. They live on my timeline. And I'm working on getting them all put together in a place so you could go back and see this one or that one. Right now, you could scroll, uh, but anyway, we'll work on that. I'm so glad that you're with me today. It's such a treat. And uh, the more uh, observant of you may have noticed that I got my good glasses back. No offense to my to my other glasses that I went to Walgreens and bought. Got I got the 9.99 kind. They're sort of square and... If I were young, they'd look hip. On me, they just sort of look harsh. <laughs> but they were $9.99. I'm not paying $24 for something. It's just going to get lost. But these are my very special glasses because I got them in Spain, in Madrid, when we went to visit our daughter February 20th to the 25th. I got back on the 26th because I took a side trip to England to visit my darling cousin, Frida Grundy, who might be here today. I don't know. Uh, and my cousin, Julia Mahanti, helped put us together and help me get messages back and forth so I could arrange that trip. I didn't get to see you this time because there's a distance and I, it was a short trip, but next visit I'll see Julia too. Um, so while I was in Spain, I lost my glasses. <laughs> and so we went to uh, a Spanish apothecary, uh, pharmacia. They have the little signs up and these are just, I just love these. Look, they have turquoise blue sides and tortoise shell, fake tortoise shell fronts. And they just feel so good and they're kind of round and I put them on and they were magic. So I was very distressed when yesterday before, shortly before cooking, I went into the bedroom and I knew that I had them and then I couldn't find them. And that, that's a bad, that's a bad scenario even for me. It's not a car situation. Um, so I went out and bought new ones. Hold on. Okay. Turn off that timer. Remind me to get through the day. And last night when I came in and was getting ready to go to bed beside my bed, but a little ways over, there's my table and my lamp, and then there's stuff lined up, about three feet of stuff that is just stacked up against a bookcase, not being tended to, not being taken care of. And at the very edge of that is this, and at the bottom of my, this lovely calendar on the ground, they were sitting right there. And they're kind of, it's kind of a neutral color if you're not looking for it. And I thought that this was uh, God's joke because this is a wonderful calendar that my friend Gail Nissan, who might be with us, she's here almost every day. She lives in California and we are, we go way back and uh, she's precious to me. And she sent me this beautiful calendar. And why is it sitting on the floor three weeks after it came to me in the mail? So I think the universe said, hang up that beautiful calendar. It is inspiring and charming and delightful. So I got my glasses back and I'm gonna hang up my calendar. So that's, that's my joke today. So that, that was on me that they walked away. Now, right here, going, um, just jumping right into the middle. Today, I'm making a wonderful Thai one dish meal, which is chicken hidden in curried rice. And this is the broth, the brine for the easy cucumber pickles that go with it. And we've had those before. What did we serve them with? I, oh, I, th maybe the, I think it was maybe the Thai salmon cakes. We had these on the side. Anyway, it's just the simplest thing. This is a half cup of white vinegar, a half cup of sugar, a half cup of water, and a teaspoon of salt. And I put it in, all it needs to do is come to a boil just enough to dissolve the sugar and the salt. So since today, I usually do it in a saucepan because it's more saucy than fry-y. But today my saucepan is busy being a fryer. And so I just took this little skillet, heated it up, and it's already cooled off a lot. I want it to be room temperature before I put in cucumbers and sprinkle with a little bit of cilantro and peppers. And that'll be our very simple um, everyday cucumber pickle that will go with our wonderful chicken hidden in curried rice. I adore this dish. Uh, this is one that I had not often, but I, I knew it well. It's a standard dish in Thailand. You will see it, interestingly, you'll see it two places. It's not something that um, that people that I knew made at home very often, but everybody knew how to make it. At home, you're going to have rice, plain rice, and six or seven or eight or nine or ten things to go with it every night. Plain white rice, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, always. A, a flavored rice dish, this is a curried rice 
doesn't go with anything else. It's a one dish meal. So if you've got, if you're cooking supper for your family, you're not going to cook just one thing. You're going to cook the rice and all the possibility things. This is something that people do for a party. And I remember reading about a beloved, you know, just reading about this dish. I guess it was in a cookbook. Uh, and it said that this was the signature dish of beloved professor so-and-so who was an esteemed uh, professor of something at a university and his students came every year he did a big party for his current students and his past students and he would make this dish for everybody now there were probably 300 people there so he didn't personally make it but he had this was a signature dish he could make it and originally he had made it for his students uh, and so that was that was the main course that was served for everybody the other place that you'll see it is street food somebody will have a stand serving cow mok guy cow is rice Mok is hidden away, tucked away, and uh, guy is chicken. Cow, rice, hidden away, chicken. <laughs> chicken hidden in rice. So uh, we'll come back to that. What we need for this, and uh, by the way, I have, I'm burning a candle because this is a beautiful candle that my friend Don Fry sent to me. Thank you so much. And I, I'm just so enjoying um, all your generosity uh, but this candle has geranium and it has a wonderful scent and I've been thinking a lot about um, how many people we've lost for over a hundred thousand and I think it's you know the number that we have that is official is is small and uh, for many reasons and um, that's so many souls that's so many lives that's so many homes and families and repercussions and I can't think about it too much I can't think about it all the time but I also feel it doesn't feel right to never think about it and put it away, which I can easily do. I've got air conditioning. I've got food on my table. I've got the internet. Um, it's easy for me to not see it. And I think, it's, I think it's really, really important for us to see it and not see it. It's the best of times. It's the worst of times. And I want us all to be taking care of ourselves and take breaks from it, but we need to be aware. So I love the, um, I love the, uh, the, obituaries isn't really quite the word, the, the tributes, the memorials, the, the reminiscences that groups like the New York Times and there's an online uh, version where they're just doing a portrait of some of the people that we've lost. And of course, some of them are famous and we're seeing that as because that's news. And I just want to keep that in mind and especially always, always the heart for New York City because it's so much better than it was. But that's, that's also kind of deceptive. It's like, wow, it's so much better than it was. It's past the peak. But it's still so devastating. So um, just keeping a candle lit and keeping my heart open and um, taking care of myself and you know living through this the best way we can. That's what we're all doing, right? So this dish, so it's a party dish. It's a one dish meal. And I've got one that's ready, which actually we should look at right now because, so the pickle we're gonna finish. We're gonna have crispy shallots on the top and then I'm gonna make one so you can see how to get to the end, but let's check this. Uh, and I'm using my beautiful uh, enamel cast iron Dutch oven. This is my middle level. I've got a, actually I've got a small one that's a green Le Creuset, which is a good bit smaller than this. Then I've got this one and I've got one that's a little bit larger. So let's take the lid off. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. So, oh, thank you, Will. And of course, watch out for the steam. <laughs> uh, and let's just spoon it up just a little bit and see. It just looks fantastic. The, the curry, curry powder color. I'm gonna just take a little bit of rice out so I can taste it and just make sure. I mean, I, I feel looking at it that it's tender and that it's good, but I'm gonna wanna check it. And remember when I said chicken hidden in rice? So if we dig, it looks like just rice, but if we dig down a little bit, Look at here, there's a chicken leg. And if we dig down on this side, let's see if we can find a, there's a chicken thigh. So these are, this is a marvelous dish. You start off with hot oil. We're gonna put in garlic and, shall, uh, garlic and onions and cook them till they're tender. We're gonna put curry powder on top of that and cook those together till we get the curry flavor. Then we're gonna put raw rice into that curry flavored, curry colored, no, wrong. We've got the onions and garlic, we put on the curry powder. Now they are delicious, oily, rich goodness. We put the chicken pieces into that and brown them, get them started. And then we put the, um, 
Then we take the chicken pieces out. They're not nearly cooked. We just get them started, set them aside. They're going to release some juices that we're going to use. Then we're going to put the raw rice in and cook rice, get it started in the curried onion, garlic, chickeny oil. And then we're going to add chicken stock and the chicken pieces. How does this go? No, we're going to add the chicken stock and cook the rice about halfway. So we've got a rice pilaf at that point. And then when it's about halfway done, the, the liquid is cooked down, we take that chicken and we stick it back in and add the juices and finish cooking it the rest of the way. So that's where we are now. This, all those things have happened and you get to see it. Now I'm gonna put the chicken right back under there because not, we're not ready for it yet. So this kind of dish, once you're finished, you make sure it's done and then you cover it and leave it. I still haven't tested, and I like how the handle, I can pick, even though it's very hot, I can pick up this handle unless it's, if it's been in the oven, you don't pick it up, but if it's just been on top of the stove, I can usually uh, deal with it. Perfect. It would be wrong to put this back in. That would be a food safety issue, right? Every grain of rice, people. It's, it just makes sense. It's so good, it has so much flavor, we'll come back to that. I'm gonna put this back on the stove and let it stay hot, because I'm not ready for it yet. Back in the stove. And I'm gonna see who's here, because it is such a treat to have you here, and I want to say hello. Nancy, welcome, the uncomplicated gourmet, my good friend up in New Jersey, keeping the New Jersey home fires burning. It's always good to see you here. Susan, welcome. And my friend Susan, I told you yesterday, was posting pictures. She would have been on a, uh, a trip, a, a trip to Charleston. And it's, I believe it's a trip that you take every year or it's, it's, a, it's one where you've been before and there are favorite places that you go. And this year for all the reasons, you know, it's, it's not a year to do a trip like that. Um, so Susan's been posting every day. It's day two of the trip that we're not taking, and here's what we did on day two the last time we went. I just think that's so wonderful, and uh, I've done that a little bit with our trip to Spain. I'm, I'm going to uh, go back and do that. Look at some. We went to Xi'an in China, and I never really shared very much from that, so I think that's a good way. For me, it's good. I, it's a little bit, oh, I want to go back. Boo-hoo, I can't go anywhere, but ultimately it's I got to go to this place and I want to show you this wonderful special thing that you might enjoy seeing. I love looking at other people's too. I'm the one, if you have slides and you want somebody to look at your slides, I love it if you'll tell me about it and, you know, not spend too long on them. But, you know, I love to watch slideshows. I love to travel. I love to read about travel, food. I think I'm pretty much an open book, right? Okay, Tracy, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Gail, yes, my buddy Gail. I was supposed to hang up the calendar, so... Thank you, my darling Gail, and uh, we'll get that up on the wall and take a picture of it, and thanks for bringing my glasses back. Okay, Catherine, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Catherine, are you the one who did a garden focaccia contest? I'm looking for the person who did that. Somebody, somebody told me that they had put it out there on Twitter or on Facebook for people to send in, and they, they did a little contest of people who had done those, you know, the, the flat bread, you do the bread in the pan, and then decorate it with vegetables to be a landscape. It's, that is so cool. I haven't done it. It's not really my skill, but I love seeing what people do. It's such a pleasure. Mark, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Claudia, Claudia, how can you be here? I thought you were there. <laughs> uh, Claudia, there's something for you on the porch. So um, uh, when you come by, make sure that you don't leave empty-handed this do the old switcheroo. It's under the jasmine vines. Uh, Tracy, uh, yes, y'all will. Y'all need to make this dish. It is so good. It is so doable. There is a rice cooker version, which is also very doable. So if you're if you're more comfortable cooking in the rice cooker, and boy, it would certainly be easy to do in the instant pot. But if you've got a big Dutch oven, it's really doable on the stove. That's what people do in Thailand. So there you go. Okay, Robin, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. My New York people, I'm thinking about you every day. Um, Elizabeth, welcome. David, good to see you here. I'm glad to have you on this day. Stephen, welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, the pretty blue pot. I, I just, I love my lodge cast iron. Uh, enamel cast iron. Tandra, good to see you always. And you, Tandra, post wonderful family pictures. I, I, I love black and white pictures in old times and just love how those moments I, I just daydream and have a good time. Jimmy, welcome. My dad was named Jimmy, so I'm, you got a head start with me. And uh, let's see, Susan is here. Okay, so we need to, there you go, Will. Uh, let's get ready to go cook. So I'm going to take 
let's see, I believe it's, it's three tablespoons of oil. I've already got some of these things uh, measured out over there. Okay, so I'm keeping, now keeping my measuring spoons over here uh, with my president, so I remember where they are, because I always remember where he is. Okay, there's one. And this weekend I'm gonna finish watching the uh, HBCU graduation ceremony, which happened uh, at two o'clock this time last week. And President Obama speaks, there's lots of music and fun. I've already seen one graduation, I'm gonna watch that one also, it's really a treat. Okay, I've got three tablespoons of vegetable oil, I've got garlic and a, table, a generous tablespoon of garlic and a half cup of chopped onions, just yellow onions. Um, and I did these coarsely chopped, especially for the garlic. The, the finer garlic is chopped, the more juicy and wet it is, the qu more quickly it'll burn. So I, I don't want these to be big chunks. Sometimes I put big chunks, sort of smash garlic in because I want the flavor, but I don't really want the pieces. In this case, you do want the pieces. You want it to go all the way through and penetrate, but coarsely chopped is fine. Can you see? Here, I'm talking to you and I'm not showing you. So coarsely chopped, riggedy raggedy, do, do the best you can, but uh, don't worry, it's not, you're not going to be judged in a, in a chopping contest here. This is a teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. And this pepper I smashed up in my mortar and pestle because I haven't gotten around to refilling my pepper grinder. And we're going to cook those together and then, oh, quickly, curry paste. Curry powder, I'm sorry, and you could do this with curry paste, but Thais do it with curry powder. It's called pong curry. Pong is... Uh, powdered, so anything that is powdered up is pong something, you know, pong yira is powdered cumin. Uh, pong, uh, pong, pak, pong mit pak chi is powdered coriander. Um, pong prik thai is pounded up chili pepper. So this is pong kari, and it's the same word, and that's pro it probably comes into Thailand by way of Malaysia, which was a British colony, and so in, within, in Malay, in Malay culture, there is a wider use of English language words going back hundreds of years because there was an English language presence there. Not always the case in Thailand. Now I believe I need a tablespoon and actually before I measure out what I need. So I'm, this is curry powder and it's, um, I think I got it from Whole Foods and it's okay. It's, you know, nothing magic. I like to buy curry powder at, you know, if I can buy it at an Asian market where I feel like it's new. Isn't that beautiful with the Lots of turmeric in there. And I'm going to jazz it up just a little bit since I've got it with some extra cumin. You get one of my spoons. Thank you, President Obama. There's some cumin ground up. Isn't that beautiful? This I bought in, this came in a bag in Xi'an in China. I love it so much. And my friend Carrie Wynn, is Carrie here? Carrie read this for me when I went, I asked him the meaning of it. He was able to read it for me. I can't remember if that was online or when I saw you, but thank you because he is um, literate in Chinese and I am not. And this is coriander. So the in every Thai curry paste, you will have a lot of ground coriander, which is the seeds of the coriander plant, which is cilantro, which is called pak chi in Thai. That's used, and so a lot of coriander powder and a little, some cumin powder, and then a little bit of uh, ground pepper, black or white, is in every Thai curry paste. So that's, that's always a good thing to use. And I'm using different spoons here. So a little bit of coriander, oh no, actually a little bit more coriander powder, didn't I say used more? And then I've got a little bit of extra black pepper here and I'm just boosting the I'm just adding more flavor and because I noticed in my recipe for this uh, for this dish in my book quick and easy Thai I said if you don't have curry powder you can combine this is, this is hot like cayenne kind of pepper that color isn't that incredible that is a natural color although I wouldn't use it for anything that I was eating just for the color because it's hot okay I said you can use it you can use a teaspoon, a teaspoon each of ground cumin, ground coriander, and turmeric, and a half teaspoon each of ground cinnamon and dried red chilies. So, and what, let's see, what did I just forget to put in? What did I just say? Um, cumin, coriander, turmeric, turmeric. Yes, turmeric, standing right here. Whoops. So turmeric is the color, the color bomb. And there's already turmeric in this, of course, and there's probably already coriander and so forth. But I'm just going to add a little bit extra golden goodness. And you know what? I asked for cinnamon. And the reason that I picked those is those are spices that I figured a lot of people will have at home already. 
or could very easily find at the grocery store uh, in any spice situation, or maybe you're ordering from Penzi's, which is such a great way to deal with spices. So I've got all those together. Isn't that lovely? And now I'm going to use my fork to just mix those all together, and I might even uh, put these in a jar and shake, shake, shake it up. So I just boosted the curry powder that I had. Um, you can make curry powder from scratch. It's really just a combination of spices. Having ground turmeric, turmeric has almost no flavor, but it has that dynamite color. Even when turmeric is fresh, it tastes like the earth. It tastes like dirt in a good way. It has nowhere near the powerful flavor of its cousins, uh, ginger and galanga and um, come in. Uh, no, come in. Come in. Come in is the Thai name for turmeric. There are other. There are other members of the ginger family which are used in uh, Asian cooking, especially in Southeast Asia and Thailand. And they have great flavor, but turmeric is the only one which has this incredible color, not much flavor. So it's, it's love for its color. Okay, so I make, I use curry powder just like you get it from the store. Or boost your curry powder like I did by adding some more goodness to it. And I want a, like a good full tablespoon. Whoops, I'm gonna put that. So this is gonna go in with the salt and the pepper. So since they're all going in together, I'm combining them. And I'm gonna put this back in my jar when I have time to be really careful about it. I'll take a piece of paper and make a funnel and do it that way. Or use, uh, I'll, I'll make a little list in the recipe. I'll, I'll just remind you that it's uh, turmeric and uh, cinnamon and a few things that we use. And I'm, I'm, I have my beautiful towels and I'm not using them because I don't wanna get turmeric on them. They're so pretty. Okay, so let's go over and cook. I need to get my chicken out from the, so I, I bought plenty of chicken. I, I, brought, I bought enough for two batches. Where'd you go? Chicken, oh, here we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. I'm having a ton of it. Okay, so here is my chicken that I'm gonna take over. I'm gonna put that in this bowl here. And I've got two thighs and three legs, just like I did for the first batch. It's about a pound and a half. So I'm gonna have that over here. And I've got my, let's see, that's the second pot. Let's see, well, I'm coming behind you here. Sorry. I forgot to bring my cooking pot over. It's like I already have a pot, the one that I cooked in. Okay, so this one is bigger than you need, but I've already, this one is about the ideal size. You could get by with one smaller, it would just be a little bit deeper. So, but this is the ideal size. I've got my heat turned up super high. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in my tablespoon of oil, three tablespoons of oil. And you know what, I just wanna make sure. So this is the order I'm going in. I've got the oil, I've got the garlic and the onions. I'm gonna cook them till they smell good. I'm gonna add the curry powder, salt and pepper, get the spice mixture. And then I'm gonna put in the chicken and brown it in that. And then I'm going to add the rice. So that is heating up. And I need my, I need two cups of jasmine rice. And let me show you how I'm going to measure that out. So here is my rice. Let's see. Let's move this here. This is not hot at all, so I'm going to... Uh, not the best idea in the world, but I'm just setting this here for just a minute. So this is the 25 pound bag of rice that I got at uh, my favorite Asian market, Li Ming, which is over in Durham at the South Square area. 2020 new crop, uh, Chinese lion, the, the lion dance, um, all sorts of auspicious markings. It's red and gold. This is Asian best brand, red elephant brand, and it is from Eastland Foods. Let me show you on the back. They're a wonderful brand. They, they have a lot of products under their name and also just under their, right down here. So, so this is distributed by Eastland Food. They're based in uh, Jessup, Maryland, which is outside of Washington, D.C. and just this side of Maryland. It's either Maryland or uh, Virginia. Anyway, it's, it's suburban Washington area. And they are a Thai family that has been importing Asian food to America for I don't know, 30 or 40 years, maybe even longer. And so I like to buy a 25 pound bag. I decant it into a large, um, into a large uh, glass, colander is not the word, 
um, canister. It's not really a canister. It's a, it's a big glass um, cylinder, and it's probably made for serving uh, drinks. <laughs> you know, it's like like for a big. If you, if I had a stand at a store, but it, it's this big around. It, it's like a half of a barrel, and so I put rice out into that and measure it out. This one I have out just because I wanted to show you uh, what to look for, and I am looking for my measuring cup that I set out for some reason. Okay, never mind. I'll use a half cup measure. So I want to get out uh, two cups of rice. That's one half. That's two halves. Notice I'm not being too worried about it. Three halves. And I'll make this one a little taller because that one's a little bit skimpy. And back. Okay. So that is my two cups of rice that we'll need in just a minute. And I want to talk to you about this bag, but right now we need to be cooking, so we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's see how hot this oil, oh, the pan is hot, I can feel it. I'm going to go ahead and put the oil in, and because I don't think it's too hot for me to touch, not quite yet, it will be soon, swirling that around, and I see a little UFO in there that I don't really want. Let's see if I can... Get that out. I did. Yes. Okay, so now let's try the test. Not quite hot enough yet. I want it to sizzle at once. So I've got my two cups of rice ready. I've got some, uh, let's see, I've got the chicken pieces. I like uh, legs and thighs. A lot of times this is done with all thighs. Could be all thighs or all legs. If you put uh, a whole breast in, and it, it is most delicious if you can do it with chicken on the bone. So having those sort of smaller, more manageable pieces of chicken is probably a better way to go. Um, it's probably a better way to go. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Because it's easy to move them around and they're going to cook in the same amount of time. If you, if you were to have a, you know how enormous a chicken breast on the bone can be, that would take a lot longer to cook. That would kind of throw things off. I think this is hot enough. Yes, can you hear it sizzle? So I've got my garlic and my onion in there. And I'm going to stir. I'm using a wooden utensil because I want to be make sure that I don't scratch the bottom of my enamel cast iron pan. And it's smelling wonderful already. I'm getting garlic. I'm getting onion. I don't want it to brown. I'm reaching under you here. I've got my spices here. And then next to that, I've got my chicken. And notice I've got the tongs handy because these are so great for moving the chicken around. And let's see, I'm going to come... This side and that side. I could let it go for another 30 seconds or so, but this is good enough. I think we're going to go ahead and get these spices in here. I could have stirred them up. I didn't, but this is going to be fine. So now I'm just blending the spices. And this is a South Asian cooking technique. Uh, it's Indian. It's Sri Lankan. It's Bangladeshi. It's Pakistani. It's all of South Asian cooking. Oh, I need to turn this down. Uh, it is a, a method of cooking the spices. So you start the oil or ghee, some kind of fat, and then you often put in lots of onions and uh, garlic sometimes, and then you put the dried spices or sometimes a wet spice, a spice mixture, which in Hindi is called a masala, and you cook those spices. It opens up, you bloom them, it opens up their flavor. It makes them come together. It's a good thing to do. Enough of that. I'm going to come right here and put, start putting the chicken in. So I've I'm, I'm got my tongs. And you could use a fork if you needed to. I'm setting down the one piece of one chicken leg. I'm putting breast uh, skin, main skin side down of the thigh here, turning it way back up now because I'm putting in cold chicken pieces. Now I want that super heat again. I didn't want to burn the onions, but I do want that heat for what I'm doing now. So I'm putting my uh, legs. So both of, both of the thighs I put with the skin side down because I want to get a lot of color and flavor on that. And I'm putting these, let's see, I want to shift those, just sort of, you know, up and back just so that everybody's got some real estate. I don't, I want the, I want the color and the flavor of the curry powder, and, but I don't want to burn the onions and garlic. So I'm kind of pushing, now that I've got everything in there, I'm pushing it down to be on the bottom so that the, the skin of the chicken is on the bottom and kind of move the onions and garlic up to the side because, like I said, I don't want them to burn. Okay, so I'm going to let this go for about a minute. This, it, this has raw chicken on it, so it's going in the sink not to be used anymore until it's washed in hot, 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 hot water. 
And let's see how these are doing. Probably not much happening yet. So it's got a little bit of color, but that's color just from the uh, color of the spices. It's not really from the chicken cooking. So we've got a minute while this is happening. I'm going to grab my rice bag and show you what I wanted you to see. Let's see, can I use that there? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so on this bag, there's so much information. So it's jasmine rice, Thai hom mali. Hom is good smelling. Mali is uh, jasmine flour and rice. So it's Thai rice. It's the, the, the type of rice is hom mali, which is why jasmine rice is called uh, jasmine, jasmine fragrance rice. Now, there is no jasmine fragrance to it. Thai people know that. It doesn't smell like jasmine, but jasmine smells good and so does this rice. The aroma that jasmine rice has is a natural, toasty, um, almost buttery, uh, wonderful, uh, sort of rustic, aroma that comes up just before the rice is done. So it smells as if it's been toasting. It smells as if you browned it in a pan, but you haven't. So it's just an excellent quality of long grain rice. If you were, if you were to make this and you didn't have uh, jasmine rice, you could use basmati rice. It's not really, it may cook a little bit differently, but if that's what you like, you could absolutely use that. It's a long grain or any kind of long grain rice. And if you know how to cook medium and short grain rice, different amounts of water, different timing, you could adjust to that as long as you know how to use that rice. But Thais would use long grain rice. Okay, so, uh, uh, and so on the side, we've got Chinese characters. I believe that's the character for rice. No, it's not the character for rice. Never mind. So these are Chinese characters telling you things that you need to know. And these, this down here is Vietnamese writing, Whoa, which is after, when the French came in to, Viet, to Vietnam and occupied as a colonial power, they uh, insisted that the Vietnamese language be transliterated into uh, the, the Roman alphabet so that it would be easy for French-speaking people to read things as they did not uh, want to be bothered learning the traditional writing. So it is commonly written, Vietnamese is commonly written in uh, with an alphabet that is familiar. So that is, probably says, wonderful Thai-style jasmine rice. Uh, Milagrosa is Spanish. And this is uh, Cambodian, so this is Khmer. And it is the same family of writing. If you're familiar with Thai, you'll notice that this has a lot of qualities. That right there is uh, the sound of W. That is exactly the same that it would be seen in, uh, in Thai or in Lao. Whereas the other one, it's like you're seeing double. It's more, things are more ornate, they're more thick, but they, they surely come from the same uh, form of writing that comes from South Asia, from India, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Okay, and then down there, 25 pounds. If you have a place to keep it, I, and you like rice a lot, you'll get an incredible bargain buying large quantities of rice at, a, at an Asian market. 25 pound bag would be, I think this is $22 maybe. Um, so, because white rice keeps pretty much forever, all the things that, that would spoil in rice are there when it is in the brown rice form. Uh, the oil, the fat. When rice is um, is milled to become white rice, all those things that would spoil are gone. And so the bad news is the nutrition that they brought is gone. The good news is that the spoilage uh, factor is also gone. So you can keep rice, in fact, in, I think in parts of Asia with basmati rice, I think it's often aged for years, and that's considered a plus. So there you are. Okay, so this... I could now leave these for another three or four minutes for it to brown on that side, but since we are, since we have a whole day to go through, I'm going to go ahead and take these out. So let's pretend they've gone for two or three minutes more, and they're nice and brown on the bottom. The same, that's not bad. But remember, most of that color is from the curry powder, not from brown. So this has both the curry powder and it also has actual browning. This chicken is going to have plenty of time to cook and be done when I put it back in. So I'm taking it out. I'm just going to speed up a little bit. And so the bottom won't be as brown, but the chicken will be delicious. And I have this up pretty high, so I don't want it to uh, burn. I'm going to set this over here for a minute. It's going to release wonderful juices, and it's time to get this rice in. So this is my two cups of jasmine rice that I just measured out. And, <clears throat> and I'm turning the uh, belatedly turning the, uh, the heat down now. So, because I do not want to burn this, and I hope that I didn't. I think we're still on the charming caramelized side and not the, oh my gosh, I burnt the creme brulee. So there's brulee and there's burnt. And I hope that we're still in a brulee phase with this rice. We'll see you in a minute. So 
I turned it down. I can't stand it. I have to get every grain of rice. That is a, it's kind of like your sacred duty. Rice is precious. And you don't say, ah, that's most of it. You get every grain of rice out. Did it. Oh, one on the side. Okay. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to stir and stir and stir. Some of this is extra crispy. I think we'll still be okay. I may pick out some of the gigantic onion bits that are burned beyond what I find charming. But it's still going to be, the majority is going to be absolutely wonderful. So I'm now going to turn it back up because I got past that moment. And I had it too high. I should have turned it down when I put the chicken in and left it in and it was browning. I, I let it get too, too dark. So I'm going to leave this in. Um, it's not enough to harm it when it's cooking. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the water. And of course, when we add the water, some of this will float to the top and I may be able to pick it out. So this stage is I had the oil. Um, I, let the, I, let the, I let it cook a little bit too brown, so there's not quite as much oil and color as I would like, but it's okay. You can see now the rice is, it has just a few little white bits, but it's pretty much um, nicely infused with the curry spices and the, um, the richness of the oil and the uh, chicken, the good chicken goodness that is now in there. So now we're going to add the liquid, which is, let's see... Oh, I remember. So why, I thought sure that I got the chicken broth ready. I did. Okay, so take a look. So this is exactly, and I didn't plan that, three and a half cups of chicken stock that I made from rotisserie chicken leftover uh, this week. And it is just ready to be used. And, I, you know, I just put in water to cover and kept it going. And so this is cold. I'm going to put this in. And I want all the, if I, if, if I wanted to take the fat out, I, oh, ouch, touch the side of the pan. If I wanted to get the fat out, I could do that. I, I think it's delicious, and I will probably look back for that. Uh, but So that is three and a half cups of chicken stock, chicken broth. You could use canned. You could even use water. We're doing bone-in chicken. You would actually have enough uh, flavor um, if you were using, if you used water. There'd be no, not much point in using vegetable stock because it's a chicken dish so uh, but if you're doing something along this line of course stock is stock um, so that's going to come to a I want this to come to a rolling boil and now would be a time to go in with a let's see to go in with a skimmer and pull off a scoop off this, these bits that are burnt. This is great. I, I don't want to get too much rice in the business. Um, so I'm being cautious, but because they're, because they float, I can get a lot of those off. And you know what? I can clear this up when it's cold and just add a little bit more rice in there. I can get the liquid back by just straining it back in, but this is working out pretty well. So I think we've got the most of the burned up bits. Now if this were a uh, Cajun, a roux for a, a Cajun or Creole style gumbo and I burnt it like this, start again. There's too much uh, too much happening. You, It would be ruined because the roux is the heart of, of your dish. But these are accoutrement and not the finit, not the central central part so can you see how this is dripping i'm just holding it on this very fine screen net and the some of the broth is dripping back out i don't want to lose that liquid and i think i'm going to add just a tiny bit more uh, rice will let me if you'll go that way just a tiny bit for a second i'm going to put in a handful two small handfuls of rice because i don't want to be short of rice and now we want to bring this to a boil. I'll, have to, I'll need to do that again. Okay, so we're going to bring this to a rolling boil and let it cook down just a little bit. And let's head back over to the other side because I'll, I'll come and I'll bring this back over to show you the stages. We don't, there's nothing to watch anymore until I put the chicken in. So let's go back to the other way. And, uh, and here we go. Let's see. 
So I've got the chicken pieces that I took out, and these are gonna go back in. These are, are hot, so I'm not gonna put them in the refrigerator because they're still hot. And if I put them in now hot, the outside would get cold, the inside would stay warm, and that's a food safety no-no. So when you have something that was hot before you refrigerate it, you wanna let it come down to room temperature. By the time this is ready to put it, be put in the refrigerator, it'll be ready to put back in the rice. So I'm gonna just set this over next to the rice, which is where it's going to go, and come back and talk to you about the rest of this lovely dish. Okay, so, so we need our pickles, and that is, I got little cur Kirby cucumbers, and I'm gonna cut off their top and their stem end and their flower end. Whoop. And then I'm gonna come along the sides with my vegetable peeler, which we lost and then we found again. I wonder where that went. Vegetable peeler, Will, any thoughts? Vegetable. You found it for us. And did I set something down on it? Okay. Up oh, over on the table with, I got it, Will. Uh, so I put it over with the cucumbers and then couldn't find it. Ha! I was being too careful there. Okay, so I'm just peeling off the outside of this cucumber. It's a little bit, um, it's, it's actually completely edible, but I think it's kind of pretty to take off some of it. And uh, what Thai people often do is peel it and then come down the sides with the tines of a fork. And that makes, if you are very skilled at it, that can make a lovely design in the cross sections of the cucumber. So let's do that on one of these. And let's peel this other one. And of course, one parent, uh, vegetable peeler is so fast, but it's also, quite fine to use a paring knife, except my Thai students don't like me doing that. I, I balance it on my thumb and cut toward myself, and so they said, don't do that, do this, which I can do if I concentrate and not, I'm not in too much of a hurry, cutting away from yourself. Uh-oh, I lost a lot there. Okay, so however you get your cucumbers peeled, or if you like to leave them unpeeled, that is fine. So one thing I like to do is I want, I want to have... Um, Sometimes I want to have big circles, sometimes I want to have half moon, sort of a bite size. So I'm cutting this one in half lengthwise. And because this is a nice, not oversized, not, it hasn't grown too, too sort of big and uh, too uh, fibrous. So that's lovely. Even though there's seeds in there, we love them. So I'm going to just cut this crosswise into maybe quarter inch, quarter inch pieces, quarter inch or a little bit less, half moons. And where are they going to go? They're going to go right into the lovely pickle brine. Remember this? This was half cup of vinegar, white vinegar, half cup of sugar, and a half cup of water, and a teaspoon of salt. So that's going to marinate and become just a very simple, my grandmother called it a refrigerator pickle. And these, this, remember this one, I did the little bit of, uh, of fork design. That's, that's not bad. There's a little, there's a little look happening there. That's kind of nice. We'll put those in too. So we're having hodgepodge for 100 different designs. This is getting pretty big. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna do a little bit more of that. I, I do like those little, I do like those little uh, indentations, the little, I guess decorating with a fork is my grandmother's wheelhouse, so I always find that nice. What? Amy Evans is here. I, I can't hear you. Amy Evans is here. Amy, hello, welcome. So glad to have you here from Houston, Texas in the house with that beautiful book, A Good Meal is Hard to Find. Oh my goodness. It is such a treasure and I love seeing things about it. People are in love with that book and with good reason. I'm gonna go get it. And it actually kind of matches my outfit today. So <clears throat> it's a special Saturday. All right, so here is, here's all, aren't these pretty? See, see that, little, that little fork thing is kind of fun. I like it. And you could have left more green on. You could take it completely off. You could leave it on. It's your cucumber salad. So I'm going to let these marinate in here and they, let's see, we need a little bit of cucumber, uh, cilantro, cilantro cumber. So I'm going to just go ahead before I forget and chop up a little bit of cilantro 
leaves and put them in with the cucumbers. And I'm, I also add some chili peppers, but not at this point. This is gonna be used on the rice. So I'm gonna leave it here just like that. Isn't that beautiful? And you make that ahead of time and it's ice cold. The cucumbers are gonna be ice cold. It's going to be so delicious. I, this is not something I would make a big batch at the beginning of the week and keep all week. It does, doesn't get bad, but you know, it gets a little bit less crisp. So make this, eat it up, and then uh, make some more. You could actually use the brine again. You could strain it out and use the same brine and put in, you know, no meat or anything like that, but you could put in new pickles, you could put in carrots, uh, and use that brine probably a second time and do very well. Okay, so I'm gonna set this over here. And now let's talk about the garni. So the other gar the garnish for this is these cucumber pickles and crispy shallots, which are beloved in Southeast Asia. They're used all kinds of places. Um, if you love if you love the French onion, the French fried onion, onion bits that are that go on green bean casserole, you'll love these. They're even better. Uh, they're, they're not dipped in the batter at all, so it's little bits of shallot. They're just fried in hot oil. In fact, we're going to do that in a minute. Let me take a look at our rice. Oh, it cooked fast. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. The spirits are with me today, people. Because this was... It hasn't burned yet, but take a look at... Where'd that liquid go? I wanted to show you. <laughs> I wanted to show you again. Remember how it had the liquid on top with the burnt bits? Well, golly, they don't even look burnt anymore. And it's cooked down. Now this rice is not halfway. It's not done. It's it's probably it's probably halfway done, but it's it's not as done as it looks. Okay. So all that liquid cooked out. It swelled up a little bit. So this is the point at which we want to hide the chicken in rice. So let's get our chicken. I'll come back and talk about the shallots in a minute. This is a this is a moment for action. So all that broth, remember, it's gone into the rice. So that flavor is going to be great. And got my, okay. So I'm going to take this beautiful chicken thigh and I'm gonna put it, remember I put it skin side down when I was trying to brown it. Now I'm gonna leave it with the skin side, the pretty side up. And I'm gonna put a chicken drumstick here push it up against the side of the pan, and then I'm gonna put another thigh over here and kind of kind of nestle them on the bottom. And then I've got two more drumsticks to deal with. So I'm gonna put one fat side right next to the thigh, and then I need every grain of rice, every grain of rice, yes. Okay, take out my beautiful teak elephant spoon and make a place for this other drumstick, in you go. Now, look here, don't miss this liquid. You can't see it as well because I have an orange plate, but there were some juices on this. I had, there were more juices this morning. Rem remember how I cooked? I told you that I was not browning the chicken as long as I would have just because I wanna finish it up. So I'm speeding it up a little bit. It'll still be done, but if I had browned it a little bit more, we would have more juices here. So, also, okay. So now I'm gonna, we'll actually need you to come back now. So I've got the chicken pieces in the pot and now I wanna hide them. So I'm gonna just scoot the rice over them. That, this is why I want them to be all the way on the bottom and I'm gonna bring the rice. So this is the un, undercooked rice and I'm going to see if I can completely cover these chicken pieces. Now, the, as the rice cooks, it will swell up so it will, it, things will be more hidden. Remember how it looked when I brought the pot over and you couldn't even really tell that there was rice in there. So this, this looks good. I'd like it to be covered a little bit more, but this will be, this will be wonderful. Okay, so let's scoop out the last little bits of rice because every grain of rice, there we go. And was there something else that I needed to clean off? I don't, let's see, I had my, oh, just make sure that I got all the rice off my, see, look, look at that beautiful, see the color, that's color and flavor, it's wonderful. There's so much color and flavor in this. Okay, so I'm gonna put this, you stay here, I'm gonna put this back on the stove on, say, medium low, so that it is cooking, but not cooking super hard. And this is now, digging out my heavy 
matching lid. So this is my Captain America. Actually, Captain America would be like this, right? So this is my Lodge cast iron enamel, beautiful pot. And I put that on tightly and I'm gonna leave it Medium low, but more towards medium is what we want there. Okay, so now that second batch is cooking, everything is in, and let's see who's here, and then let's think about how we finish up our beautiful, uh, our beautiful one that's already ready. Okay, so get my hands cleaned up, and my beautiful, beautiful favorite glasses. <sighs> okay. Susan, Spoleto is your favorite event. So this is the time of the Spoleto Festival, which is a, uh, a music festival in Charleston that's been happening for 20, 30 years, a long, long time. I actually have friends in High Point who, um, uh, uh, Terry and David, who have attended that many, many times. And it's, um, so it's always a good time to go to Charleston. Charleston in the spring must be magical. And then all the musical events, how wonderful that must be. And I'm Sorry that you're not able to be there this year, and I'm enjoying your trip with you. Thank you for sharing it. Okay, so that's Nancy, and all right, so, all right, so this is where we were, I think, when I realized that I needed to check on that one. So these, this is little bits of shallot that I fried in oil and am going to use as garni. This is, look at my Christmas china. Let's see, I want to put this in, I want it to be flat because I want them to be as dry as possible. So, well, isn't this just the perfect little plate for it? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these. They're not super crispy yet. I might, you know, they're just out of the fryer. They cool down. I would like them to be a little bit more crisp. If I maybe put them in the oven, they would crisp up a little bit more. But as long as they're brown and uh, delicious, they'll be fine. You know, they're, they're golden cooked. So these were just cooked in oil. We'll do it in a minute. Those are shallots. And let's talk about shallots, people. We like things to be big. So when I went to Thailand, I wasn't real familiar with shallots. I had not cooked with them a lot. I'm, uh, they're, not wildly wide, they're not widely and wildly used in the southern cooking of Piedmont, North Carolina that my dairy farm grandmother and all her brothers and sisters who were born in the late 1800s were familiar with. I'm not saying nobody in the South uses shallots, but it's not, it's just not something my mother had at home. I always got mixed up on green onions and, and shallots, which was which. I think they may be uh, the same name. So these are shallots that I get at the Asian market that remind me of the ones that I got in Thailand. They're small, it's, it's like, you know, a head of garlic is, a head of garlic is a head of garlic, and a shallot is maybe not quite that big, but it's just one thing as opposed to all the little cloves. And in Thailand, they were very pink inside, beautifully pink. So when I go to the Asian market, I get a little net bag full of these. Now, this, this it's been a while. A lot, the ones that are in here now are pretty tired. They've gone bad. So I need, to, I need to edit that and keep the good ones. Here are some of the good ones. But if I go to my Harris Teeter grocery store, we have shallots. And look at them. They're like, they're bigger than golf balls. They're heading towards tennis balls. This one fits exactly in the palm of my hand. <laughs> How did they get so big? So this is why I don't like recipes that say two shallots or a medium onion or, uh, e you know, even three cloves of garlic. Well, well, which one? Because that's a clove of garlic and that's a clove of garlic. And by cracky, so is that. So all three of those are cloves of garlic. And three of this versus three of that, not the same thing. So in my recipes, you'll always see a tablespoon of chopped garlic or a quarter cup of it because I, I know how much I want you to have, and to me, that's a way to do it. People who like to weigh things can, of course, always weigh it, but um, that is, that's a whole nother kettle of fish. Okay, so I have here beautiful purple shallots, which are this type, I think. Yes, so, so these are this kind of small shallots, and I just chopped them up. I quartered it. To be fast, I quartered it and I just coarsely chopped them. This one, I took my time and cut the beautiful, they're big, but boy, they're easier to cut, right? It's, it's, easier, to, it's easier to chop this up than it is a whole bunch of these. So, you know, here we all are. So I'm cutting off the tip of this shallot and I'm gonna peel back the sides. All of these have, these, have a green shoot in the middle, which is uh, not ideal. So I'm peeling 
away the sides and this is the beautiful I'm complaining about the large size but look at the beautiful purple color and so I'm peeling everything away and I'm getting rid of all those papers compost and now I'm going to just cut crosswise very thinly and this is how I get the lovely rings you don't have to have rings but they sure are pretty so we're cutting those up some some of these are thinlier than others I stop concentrating and it gets thicker hard for me to be consistent okay so then I'm just going to wiggle these this is a good job you got somebody helping you okay you cut them thinly and then you want to break them up and push them apart as if you were doing onion rings but these are tiny onion rings and they're purple ones and let me get my oil together for for, for cooking the whoop, shallots and I'm moving my so this is our rice pot that we're going to eat. And I'm moving our rice pot that is still cooking. And I need, now I do need, I need my, uh, something to protect my hands. Moving this over to the other burner to free up this main burner, which cooks a little hotter. Okay, and I'm gonna heat that oil up and we'll come back over here in just a <coughs> New York minute. Lots of all the things, all the things. Okay, so, so back to picking these apart. You don't dip them in flour or anything. It's just, you just slice them and you open them up. If you had time to spread these out on a tray and let them dry out, they would brown and they, they'd be ideal, but you can cook them while they're, while they're wet. So, uh, so that's, that will still work. And this is an extra. It is fine to make this dish and not have the pickles and not have the crispy shallots. Those are an extra flourish. Um, if you had a street stand, you would always have it, but it's, it's a little bit more work, especially, fry, especially frying shallots. That's a lot of work. So don't feel that you have to do that if that is in any way a disincentive from making it. It's, it's the cherry on top of the ice cream. And we, we have ice cream a lot on top of something, but we usually don't have cherries on it, right? Well, that's sort of when you're, you know, at uh, Lindell's Dairy Bar in High Point in 1964. Okay, so that is enough of those. So I've got this one left. I just want to see what these look like. Remember I told you I chopped these up. These are not as purple. I'm just going right through the paper here. I just wanted to see what was inside. Uh, they're not as pink at all. It's funny. Um, so, But they are this tender size and this wonderful flavor. So these work great. So as I said, if I, if I hadn't been in a hurry to get some of them fried up for you, I would have done this small batch the same way that I'm doing the big purple ones. Because I do, if you can make it little rings, that's great. If you don't have time for little rings, chop it up, that's still great. If you don't have time to do it at all, that's still great. Um, it's a wonderful dish, even if you just do the chicken and the rice, okay? So I'm actually gonna put those in with this. That won't hurt anything to have them all together. And let's go see how our oil is doing. And for my frying, Fearless frying. I've got a paper towel on a plate. I've got my, well, I didn't tell you we were coming back over. I'm so sorry. Surprise. I should have been ready to do this before. Ready? But I wasn't. Okay, so I've got my, I've got my slotted spoons over there. And I want to have this, remember, so remember this contraption that I used for getting out those burnt onion rings. I want to have this for scooping out the cooked shallots, except that's not going to be very good because now it's got curry paste on it. Never mind, we're not going to use that. Um, I noticed in picking this up that there's some juice in here that I would like to have, so I'm going to... So I'm going to strain, so remember this is those tidbits, I'm going to strain all this into a tiny but very fine mesh strainer because I want to get all that, I want to get all that goodness. So Will, are you ready to go over when I say? I just, I wasn't sure. Okay, so, so I'm scraping all this out into the tiny, oops, tiny frame there and I'm actually going to push on it and get all that goodness. See how much goodness I'm getting out of there? Okay, so I'm going to put this back over a bowl. Look at that. 
That belongs in my dish. I'm going to pour this into the pan with all the other good things. Come on over and meet me there. Okay, so, so I just lifted up the lid and I poured that yummy oil into the pot. And I'm closing it back up. And now we're actually, we actually want to be right here with the shallots. And I've got oil just in a little skillet, I mean in a, in a little saucepan. And sometimes I would actually, you know what, if I were just doing, when I would do this myself and I weren't thinking about you looking at it, I would use a skillet. Uh, because that you, because what you need is surface area. I don't really need the depth. If I were making donuts, you know, I would need depth here. The, the shallots are just going to float on the top. But I want you to be able to see the color change, and my skillet is dark colored, so you won't be able to see what's happening, so that's why I use this pot. Use whatever is good for you for deep frying. I actually do like frying things in a saucepan like this because the oil is very far away. So to me, it's a good, uh, that's a good setup. So put that in, ooh, pretty good. I think the oil is, ooh, ready. Just dropping that in, dropping some more in, and stepping back. And I just wanna move them around, move them around. You would not want, you, remember I did not want to use that wonderful strainer because it's got, uh, it's got curry powder and various goo on it. So that would not be good. I do like that fineness, but this slotted spoon is going to work just fine too. You see how it's coloring a little bit? And you see how, see there, taking some color. And there are some little dark brown tidbits that just show up. That is probably the, the, the dark, dark parts are probably bits of paper that have gotten attached, or that, that have dropped in along with all the other things. So I'm getting these out as fast as I can and not able to get them all out. I'm gonna put some more onions in because that will slow it down and some of the onions may burn, but I just wasn't able to move as fast. That strainer, that flat strainer that I have is really fabulous and Grace Young found it at an Asian market. So if you're at an Asian market, Go to the tool section. You will find some real treasures, and that little skimmer strainer is one of them. But you don't have to have it. Nobody in Thailand had one, and you, you, know, you can do this just fine. Just be thinking about what would be good for that. What would do that well? Okay, so these are, and I would, I, I would rather take them out when they are underdone and maybe not quite as brown as I would like. It's an art uh, because I don't want them to burn. So better to get them out than have them burn. And it's, woo, they all get ready at once. They're swirling. I'm, I'm not draining them because I'm coming back so quickly because I want to get everything out. There's one that's very dark. And I'm going to put in the last batch. So this is it. And at the end of this batch, which will happen very quickly, I'm going to just pour the oil over a, I'm going to pour the oil into a bowl. I'm going to scoot back right here just a minute. And let's see, ah, here's what I'm going to use. So to finish up, I just realized I can use this. So I've got a very nice strainer, smallish size, that will sit on the side there. And that's what I'm going to use to get through it. Since I'm finished, since I want all the oil, since I don't need to put anything back in, I don't need the oil to stay in there. And so now I'm stirring and stirring and stirring. Uh, not all of this is done. Well, I'm going to ask you to lift it up just a little bit because I don't want any splashing. Okay, whoops. So I'm going to, no, oil, turn the heat off. There we go. That would have been, that's a big fire hazard, what I almost did there. Okay, so don't do that. Okay, so these got super dark, but I don't think they're too burnt. I'm still going to put them in. We're good. Let's go back over to the other side. I will put this, this is stainless steel. It's not hot yet. I'm going to set it on the back of the stove. Off, off, off. One burner is on uh, medium because the rice is still cooking. And let's get over here and make a beautiful plate. So that is, that's too dark. So it's not my most beautiful batch. And it's nice to do this when you're not in the least bit of a hurry. And so I'm gonna go back and I wasn't a, boy, I sure, I, I count on having this to be able to get them, scoop them all out, you know, two sweeps. And with the slotted spoon, it's just, it's a little bit harder. So I'm gonna just grab these dark, dark, burnt, and I don't mind that they're dark, but they are burnt and burnt looking. And I think that is pretty much all of them that we got out of there. And I'm going to put, let's see, that one, that one, that one right there. 
that one there, I think we're good. So I'm gonna take these, so I've got this beautiful batch, and I'll put this on the other side of it, and be nice if we had time for these to dry out completely, they get a little bit crisp. The more time they can spend, say, on, uh, on a paper towel and separate from each other, the more they will become crispy. But they're gonna be delicious and wonderful no matter what you do. Okay, so those, that's the burnt part. And went through a few paper towels, which are in shorter supply now than they used to be. Um, I think I might, I need to think about, you know, cooking. It's like, you know, I've got dish towels are made to get dirty. So instead of keeping, keeping them all beautiful, I want to think about, can I use dish towels more where I use paper towels and uh, not be, you know, can I, can I cut back on, uh, on one-time uses of things? Okay, so that is our beautiful shallots. This is our beautiful platter. This is our beautiful um, pickles. Let's check the pickles. Wonder how they are. Okay, so I'm going to take a nice half pickle, right? The half cucumber, thick half slice of cucumber, and oh, I can't believe how good that is. It's incredibly delicious. This marinade is so simple. You should, if this, if you know what, if this is all too much, make the cucumbers. <laughs> They're so simple. Half a cup of water, half a cup of white vinegar, half a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of salt. Put cucumbers in it. Put it in the fridge. Refrigerator pickles. Yes, don't thank me. It's it's just what people do in Southeast Asia. And a lot in the South also. Oh, Will, is this new? <gasps> yes. yes. Oh my goodness, so many people. Okay, we'll leave this for one second. Betty Ann, welcome. My friend Betty Ann Carino did a beautiful... Um, uh, cooking lesson on polverone, polverones for the Filipino Foodways website, and it's awesome. I haven't quite finished watching it, but it's I, I love seeing you on TV after reading your writing for so long. So Betty Ann is a treasure. Pat, I watched you this morning. My friend Pat Nogar has a weekly uh, Saturday mornings with Pat Nogar, and she is at her dining room table, and sometimes she's outside on, on the back uh, al fresco and sometimes she's even out on location and she today she had ice cream and ice cream cones and it was so much fun and there's often a cocktail and it's just delightful to be with her uh so my friend betty ann says her son loves curry based dishes you'll love this one this, this is probably not just thai i'll bet this is one of those all over southeast asia kinds of dishes and thai, thailand is china's up here and then here's thailand and thailand goes down and to malaysia and Singapore and Indonesia, and from there across the water, boats have been going, ships have been going back and forth from India and South Asia over to Thailand and up since since uh, the year 1000 of the Common Era. So there's been trade, there's been influence. So Thai food has many threads of Indian and South Asian cooking, like this dish, and it has many threads of Chinese and East Asian cooking, like like a bowl of uh, rice noodles with duck and, um, and herbs in it. Uh, so this is a very Indian, and of course Indian food is much more than curry powder. This is where, uh, this is not the finest dish of India, but this is where due to colonialism, curry powder goes out and becomes an ingredient that is all throughout the, the world at that time. And it's easy, it's, a, it's an ingredient that is beloved in Chinese, uh, South Asian, Southeast Asian cooking. So it's, you'll see it in a lot of fantastic dishes. Samosas, curry powder. And he will love this one. So Gabby, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I love watching you. Uh, Tandra, additional spices. Yes, so play with the spices. For, for If you're making curry powder, if you can get to an Asian market, you want to get fenugreek. It's little square. The seeds are like tiny squares, and you can grind them up or you can get them ground. But putting fenugreek into curry powder will give it a distinctive flavor that you can't get any other way. But curry powder is just an amalgamation, a combination of spices that work together well. So it is something that you can play with. So I'll give you, I'll give you a baseline and then you play with it. Okay, uh, Chris, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I love following you on uh, Facebook and everywhere in the world and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Christian, welcome. Glad you are here. Trisha, good to see you. I like watching you online. Cynthia, Buenas tardes. Good to see you. So glad that you're here. Uh, Kathy, welcome. Peter, good to have you. Monica, Monica, I'm glad you're here. Laura, good to have you here. Um, I think I need to send you a form in the mail. 
Uh, Amy, Cameron Evans is here. I've got to go get my book. Carlin, welcome. Sarah, glad to have you. Barbara, Miss Barbara, how are you? I'm so glad to see you here. I hope you're well, and I hope you're eating some good food, and my best to your uh, dear ones. Pat, my kitchen smells so good. Pat Nogar, who is a cook and a chef and a food person, she said, I bet your kitchen smells so good. Yes, second round of cooking these curry spices with onion and garlic and chicken. It smells pretty great. Will is being very calm. He knows he will eat later. Uh, Judy, welcome from Italy. It's such an honor to have Judy Witz Francini here. Divina Cucina. Look her up. You should follow her and you should sign up for her Patreon. Divina Cucina. D-I-V-I-N-A-C-U-C-I-N-A. -I 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 Look it up. Uh, Jasmine Rice, your favorite. Yes. Nancy, welcome. Nancy to Nancy. Emily, glad to have you here. Greg, welcome. Helen, oh my goodness, your, your recipe looks so good. Uh, Sarah, good to have you. Uh, and Gail. My friend Gail drinks a nighttime cup of turmeric garlic tea with raw honey. Turmeric has many healing and good properties. So it is, uh, turmeric is an a treat of the ancient world and it makes food beautiful please remember when people when people say talk about the monks of southeast asia they are theravada buddhist theravada, theravada buddhist monks it's the original form of buddhism that the lord buddha practiced they are still doing thousands of years later exactly what the lord buddha taught as buddhism moved into china and japan and korea different aspects of it developed just like with any religion you know with with Islam, there are different branches. In Christianity, good heavens, there are different branches. So the Buddhism of China and Japan and Korea is another incarnation. But the original Buddhism is Theravada Buddhism. That is what is practiced as daily life, heartfelt, deeply woven into the culture of Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and uh, Burma. And to a lesser extent, uh, Vietnam. Vietnam was... It was, was not always open to the same influences, uh, and Malaysia is, of course, uh, heavily Muslim. But Theravada Buddhism, people say the saffron-robed monks. Monks' robes are not colored with saffron. <laughs> saffron is one of the most expensive items in the world. Saffron is uh, is found within one flower. Is it, the, is it a crocus? I think it is. So saffron is gathered flower by flower. It's incredibly expensive. It would never be used for coloring anything. What the monks' robes are colored with is turmeric. But who wants to say, ah, oh, the turmeric robed monks? So somebody wrote that one time. They knew what saffron looked like, and they saw the monks, and they made that. And that's kind of how, you know, people who don't know are sometimes <laughs> listened to. And so, but turmeric is used as a dye. It's a fabulous dye. It'll dye your fingers. It'll dye your beautiful kitchen towels. Uh, and it will dye the monks' robes, which they want it to do. So that's now your little secret. You know that turmeric is used for the color in ballpark mustard and the robes of Theravada Buddhist monks. I hope that comes up in jeopardy for you. Or what's the game that you play in the bar or the coffee shop? Trivial Pursuit. Trivial pursuit. Uh -huh. Lori, welcome. Sarah, welcome. Let's get this on the road here. Should I check that? Yes. I should check that one and see how we are because... Because, oh, it's steamy. I see steam coming out. And I am wishing that I... Should I go over? What? <clears throat> Should I go over? I'm sorry? No, no, no. No, I'll call you. Okay. So I had that up too high. And so I'm going to put a little bit of water in. So I left that on too high. Remember I said that I would, um, I, I moved it to another burner and I, I wanted to let the new burner get really hot and then I would turn it down, but I didn't pay attention. So it has cooked a little bit too much on the bottom. I'm not sure it may or may not be um, too burnt. But I just put some water in it because right now I know enough to it's like way too hot on the bottom and a pan like that, even if I turn the heat off completely, the good news and the bad news about them is they take a while to cool down. So I put water in just to stop what's happening and I will, I'll check on that in just a minute. But let's eat the one that is perfectly, beautifully wonderful that I made while I was paying attention. <laughs> I'm trying to do too many things at once. Okay, so I'm digging in and we'll, let's see, I'm going to. Just lift up. Thank you so much. 
I shall put this right here. So here's my one of the chicken thighs. Here's one of the legs. The skin pulled away a little bit. Uh, there's another leg there with the skin. So I'm coming to the bottom, and I just want to make sure, is there any, see there's some good, there's some good caramelized business on the bottom. So after we get this out, we're going to go back and make sure that we get all of that. But isn't this beautiful? The rice is delicious. It's a, uh, it's basically a pilaf. So I'm going to serve this out on this uh, plate. So, all right, so I'm going to first get out a lot of the rice. So I pick my big platter and I'm gonna spread rice. So as I said, this is a one dish meal. You wouldn't serve, nothing else would go with this. So this is kind of like if you went to a, um, you know, a dinner party and there was asabuka. It's really not like that. I'm trying to think of another Asian uh, meal where it would be a, well, and of course, have you noticed that this is a biryani? And so when I was writing, I never thought about it when I was in Thailand, but when I was uh, looking at the recipe, and okay, how do you make this? And it's like, okay, so you, you heat the oil, and then you cook the onions and the garlic, and then you, um, you know, put spices in, and then you cook rice and meat together, and they're layered up. That's really the nature of a biryani. It's a very simple one. I mean, a biryani can be, you know, different meats and different spices and is, is much more elaborate. But this is a simple version of a biryani where you are using the, using the meat and the spices to cook and flavor the rice instead of the traditional Thai and Chinese way, which is to have plain rice, no seasoning, and lots of flavorful things to go with it. So this is the one dish. And so I'm putting, I'm mounding it up and I'm putting the, uh, putting rice everywhere it's a little bit sticky it's not as fluffy as it could be but it doesn't need to be fluffy it just needs to be delicious and the see the richness can you see the the shininess of the flavor and the oil that's everywhere okay so now let's look at this pot so I've, oh i've got one more i've got one chicken leg in here i've got more you know what i was afraid that this that this platter was too big and i realized this platter isn't too big it's it's not too small either but I was thinking that I that I might you know it might sort of be lonely in the middle. This is actually the perfect platter for this. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And remember that the chicken is hidden, so I don't need for the chicken to show here. People are going to find that out that the chicken is there. And isn't this fantastic? How many people would this feed? This would feed ten people easily. I mean, especially if you were, to, you know, if you were to do it Western style and, okay, you're going to have a salad and you're going to have some appetizers and so forth. This as a main course is incredible. And you could have this and you could also have something uh, that's a vegetarian dish. You could have a vegetarian pilaf or other thing, you know, have some things so that everybody can have something wonderful. Okay, I'm going to pile that up on the top. All right, now let's look at this pot. Let's put this back over here for just a minute. So look, I'm picking this up with my hands now. Look at that goodness. So Will, can you get over here? So I'm going to push on the bottom. So if we were in Iran, this might qualify as a an amateurish and unexpected version of tadig, which is when you have the yummy, crispy, crunchy, uh, flavored rice on the bottom where the rice becomes crispy and I believe that's from pouring butter in at the end so this is again the spices and the oil have cooked up and gotten in that's not burnt can you see there's you know it's it's cut oh actually so the darkness there that is a permanent stain that's not from this right there it is but it's not burnt you know it is the sum so this is where I was afraid it looked like it was burnt but this is really all absolutely heavenly and we are not leaving this behind i wanted you to be able to watch me loosen it up and yours it doesn't always do this if you do it if you make this the first time and this doesn't happen don't worry uh it is it's the timing it's the pot it's it's a lucky thing but it's if, if all we had was what we have already it would be delicious don't worry about this but if it happens don't say oh no i burnt it it's stuck now the question is in the other pot Will it be like this or will it be burnt? Because if I had left this on too long, you know, this is on its way to burnt, just like creme brulee is on its way to burnt, right? So I'm going to bring my, my pan back over and here it is. And now I want to take the, the yummy crispy bits and distribute them all over. Hold on just a second. 
wash my hands here. Okay, so, because some of this I may need to reach out. I'll go back and wipe off the plate because, of course, I've got all sorts of good chickeny juices on the side. Okay, so I want to have the browned bits spread out so that anywhere somebody comes in to serve or you might be serving them, you want to let everybody get some of that because that is a good, crunchy, crispy part. And let's see. So this is the last spoonful. And we're going to tuck that up there. Got this nice mountain. I wish my friend Howard Stateman were here. He loves this dish. Paul Paquette. Ajahn Prawit. My student, Pichiawandi. I have friends from Thailand or who were with me in Thailand, and they all know and love this dish. Kao mok gai. Kao is rice. Mok is hidden and tucked away. And gai is chicken. And I've only ever known this to be kao. Could you have kao mok? You couldn't have it with shrimp because you don't want to cook shrimp that long. You, could you have it with beef? I don't know. It's a chick, it, this, a lot of times there's a version. You know, there's the chicken version and the beef version, or there's, you know, sometimes shrimp is used, but this one is pretty much just what you see. Okay, so we've got this beauty, and I need some cilantro, which is right here. And now sometimes I cut up cilantro so that it's in tiny little tidbits, but here, that's not what I want. I just want it to be, I still want it to be leasy, leafy and lacy, and, you know, just undulate over the sides, but I don't want it to, you know, I don't want to have the string, so I'm just cutting it very loosely, just so I have slightly smaller bits. And there it is. And now, finishing touch, let's get some cucumbers. And so, of course, we could put, let's see, we could put cucumbers in a little, pretty little bowl like this and put it on the side. You know, we could sort of nestle it in. Do I have a, a one of, yeah, this is what I want. So we could have a small and charming little bowl right here, just sort of nestled on the side at the end. But I'm kind of liking the, uh, I'm kind of liking the, the fanciness of this. And Thai people love symmetry. I think Japanese people love uh, asymmetry. But in Thailand, things will often be, you know, that, that things are matching. So I'm going to just go around the base of this with cucumbers. Now, I'm sorry that I cut some of them in half, <laughs> but that's okay. I wanted to show you how different ways to do it. And so I'm using the big round ones first. And let's see if we have enough to go all the way around this beautiful nest. And... Yes, let's see, there are those two. They're, they fell off, but everything is clean around here, so I'm sticking them on anyway. Okay, so and now I'm going to put the ones that are the halves, I'm just going to put them in one direction, so they've kind of got a theme there. That's kind of nice, right? Just, just follow your instincts. And you know what Thai people say? Do they worry about it? Might have been right, might have been right. It's going to be fine. Everything is going to be okay. Every little thing's going to be all right is very much in the Thai spirit. Okay, and now, you thought I was done, right? But I'm not done, I forgot about the crispy shallots. I knew there was something. So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna scatter these out a little bit, and now we drape, we drape. We sprinkle and we drape and we drape and we sprinkle, and we have crispy shallots all over the place. And now, I do need just a little bit more of, because I, I wanna end up with a little bit of the green. I'm glad I put the, so I put the, the cilantro down because I forgot about the crispy shallots, but that's kind of nice because now accidentally I did a good thing. So I want to put a little cilantro on top, but I'm glad I've got cilantro and shallots kind of layered. People, I'm kind of thrilled. How about you? I haven't made this dish in a while and I've been thinking, okay, we've got three more days. What do I want you to not miss? And this is a dish that Will reminds me about every now and then. It's one that I love. I'm, I'm very proud that, uh, I'm, I'm probably not on the masthead anymore, but years, years ago, um, I was on the masthead of Subur Magazine as a contributing editor. And what I contributed was 
information on Thai food. So they would call me up or they would usually, usually an email, I guess, um, and say, what does this word mean? Or what is this cooking technique? Or is this, somebody said, this is Northern, is it that sort of thing? And I could always answer. And one time they called and said, listen, we need to know this afternoon. There's this dish. Our photographer was in, in Thailand and had this dish and it's incredible. And we've, you know, we've, we've got a recipe for it, but we don't know what, he didn't get the Thai name of it. Do you know what it is? And they sent me the picture. And it's like, oh yeah, Khao Mok Gai. Told him all about it and boom, there they went. Because and that's not true of every dish. You can't send me a picture of everything that every, anybody eats in Thailand. But a dish like this is such a classic that, it, that if you know Thai food, you would know it. And chances are you'd probably love it. Now, it's not spicy. It's not hot. It is not a chili fueled dish. If, however, in Thailand, you would be served, when you had this, you would probably have a little bowl nearby that would have fish sauce undiluted and tiny chilies, the, the hot Thai chilies, the prikinu and prikinok, the very thinly sliced red and green on top of fish sauce. And so if you wanted yours to be hot, you would reach out, get a big spoonful of that and put that on your portion. You wouldn't put it on everybody's portion. That would be like not wearing a mask. Duh. You would put it on your own portion because that is especially for you. Okay. So... Does it look good? It really is good. Now, the problem with this is we have how many? We have five pieces of chicken. So if I were serving this to Thai people, I would have probably taken the chicken and taken it off the bone. You cook it on the bone because you want that deliciousness. But if you've got time to pull the meat out once it's done, take the chicken off the bone, mix it up, and then have chicken all the way through this, that would make it a party dish where there would be plenty for everybody. I could also do this and have like four or six chicken thighs. Because today I did two batches and I did two thighs and three legs in each batch. And that was a total of about three and a, three and a half uh, pounds of chicken. So I wanted to be modest in what I was doing. But you could increase the chicken amount or you could leave it on. So here if I had four people, it's like, who wants a leg? Who wants a thigh? And I would dig that out and give it to everybody. And then we'd all eat the rice because the rice is the best part. The chicken's good. But what the chicken and the spices do to the rice, it's heavenly. And you can totally do this dish. Okay. Marsha, how are you? Oh my goodness. I've been seeing, I saw it was Dara, Dara's birthday and I thought about you. I saw where you commented and I know you wish that you were there. I wish I was there. I hope that you're well. It's, it's good to hear from you. Take care. Vicki, welcome. So glad you're here. Oh, my friend Tondra Watkins said, maybe with duck. Oh yes. Yes, this would be so delicious with duck. Yes. Oh my goodness. That would be fantastic. Uh, it's not typically done in Thailand, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be delicious. And what we would call it, Tundra, is Khao Mok Bet, because Bet is the word for duck. So, and Thai people would say, oh yeah, you could do that with, yeah, that'd be pretty good. Now, you you know, duck has a lot of fat. So cooking wise, you would probably want to do something to render some of the fat or, you know, just use duck. You, you, you'd need to think about that part of it, but t that would totally be fantastic. Uh, June, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm going to come see you on the other side of all this. Me and my husband, we're going to make a trip. I hope you're ready for us. And Scott, welcome. How are you? Oh my goodness. We were looking at uh, pictures from our Chinese wedding banquet and uh, there's one of uh, Ben and me that I'll have to send you. And uh, good, good, good times. Actually, it might have been the wedding in North Carolina. I can't remember, but it was Ben for sure. You'll enjoy that picture. Y'all, I'm so glad that you got to see me cook this. Can you do it? Yes? Let me know. Any questions, you can write to me. Okay, and I think, Will, I think you need to eat it, right? Yeah. Because you worked so hard. All right, so I'm going to dig in here, and I'm going to get him some of it. And I've got plenty. I'll, yeah, I can fix it back, right back up for the picture. No worries. And I'm going to grab, let's see, that's, I don't want to take a thigh out. I know that's the best part, but that's going to be kind of hard. Yeah, I've got this leg right here that I can put onto my cutting board right here and get you some goodness from which and of course this has cooked long enough that it's very easy to cut you you want it to be done you know pretty much falling off the bone not 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 falling off the bone but you want it to be very well cooked you want it to come apart easily okay and so I'm going to give you some of the crispy parts there and some of the make sure you get shallots and then i'm going to come back to the i'm not going to mess up my beautiful garni i'm going to give will some of the cucumber pickles right here these pickles thais use them all the time if you have saute it comes with these pickles if you have those um totman totman blah or totman gung 
crispy fr fried little fritters. They're actually chewy shrimp or fish. They come with this. Whenever there's something that is rich and greasy, greasy being a good thing, um, you'll have this astringent uh, dressing with it. Okay, well, I'm giving you a little of the sauce too. Enjoy. All right. And you probably need a fork and a grapefruit spoon. Why not? Okay. And I better try it too, right? Yeah. Okay, so tonight I'm going to be reading uh, My Pen Rai Means Never Mind, and we're in Thailand. And we had an interesting time last night with Amoy, Ang Moy, a little girl from next door. And uh, tonight, tonight uh, our, the, the center of our story, Carol Hollinger, is in a private Thai hospital um, in, uh, for wealthy people and she is having an operation on her throat. So she's gonna be okay, but it's a little, it's a little scary right now. Um, June Scott. Southern Living. Southern and so this recipe comes from my book, Quick and Easy Thai, which came out in 2007, I think. And it's one of the recipes which was in, my original, my first book was Real Thai, The Best of Thailand's Regional Cooking. It's regional, Reason, regional, ah! And this recipe was in there. Not every recipe that's in this book went into Quick and Easy because Quick and Easy is based on you can get the ingredients that you need or a reasonable good substitute for them at a main, at a well-equipped mainstream grocery store. This book is, this is the food of Thailand. This dish uses tamarind. And I'm, I am sympathetic and so I'll say if you can't get tamarind, you can use such and such. Or if you can't get tamarind, just leave it out. It will still be a good dish. If, you know, sometimes I say there is no substitute for X, so if you, if you can't get lime leaves, just leave them out. There's nothing else that will work. And usually it's worth making the dish anyway. But this was about the traditional way. This one is, here are Thai dishes that with a little bit of modification you can make on a busy weeknight. And when I went through and I thought about it, I thought, this dish, that's absolutely true. It cooks, it cooks a little bit longer than, than a stir fry, but it is, um, that's time where you can do something else. The, the cooking time, you can be over here, checking homework or cleaning up the dishes or um, answering emails or whatever you need to do. So it is a, there are a couple of busy moments, but it's a pretty low maintenance dish that you could totally do. So um, I hope that you're gonna try it. Will, what do you think? Delicious. He said delicious. Well, I better try too, because you never know. He kind of has to say that. <laughs> what are you gonna do? He wants to have at this. Is he gonna tell me it's not up to your best? Carrie Hewen Destroy. Carrie. Hello, Kun Carrie. I spoke of you already. This is so good. Carrie, wouldn't this be good with duck? Yes. I can't remember why I referenced you, Carrie, but I will think of it later. Oh, okay, no. people. He read Put the, this back together. Oh, yes. He Let me look at... I'm sorry? He read the rice. The jasmine rice. Jasmine rice, yes. yes. So let me come back and see what happened here. Oh. Okay. This is the bigger pot. And it's steamy, and I am wondering what we're going to find under there. I've now gone through all the spoons. Okay, so the rice looks good. The chicken, I'm sure, is completely done. And there's that. And so I'm now going to the bottom. You know what? I think we're okay. <gasps> Look. So the part, can you see? You, you can see, right, Will? Mm -hmm. I know it's very steamy, but you can see down here on the bottom, you see that this is very dark, but it is brown. It is not, I'm not, I'm not getting a scary aroma of badness. And remember how happy we were with that brown goodness? It's okay. We caught it just in time. So be more vigilant than I was. You won't be trying to talk to people <laughs> and telling silly stories when, when you are making this. So you won't have that problem. But just remember, it would be better to have it down lower and have it take a long time. I was rushing it along and that's where it's, I should have just put it on there and let it come up to a boil. But there you have it. I'm actually going to eat this right now because that's got the good part on it. You know what, Will? I think it needs a little bit more salt. Would you agree? I'd rather under salt. I have you putting in a teaspoon. Uh-oh, that was hot. That was hot like the temperature hot, not like the Thailand spicy hot. And I should have been more patient, but I wasn't. Um, so, 
So I will turn this out and do exactly the same thing. This will keep well. I will definitely take the meat off the bones and mix it in with the rice so that from now on it's going to almost be like a fried rice extravaganza. It keeps really well. I would keep this in the fridge, you know, let it cool completely to room temperature, transfer it to some kind of container. You could absolutely freeze it. It would freeze wonderfully, freeze part of it. If I were making it for a party and I wanted it to be at its super best, I wouldn't freeze it. I mean, that, it's going to be affected by that. But when you make it and you'll have, if there are two of you at home, you'll have some left over. Share what you can and then you'll also have some that you could take out on a busy night uh, three weeks from now and say, boy, this is even better. Always remember, if you freeze something, you're going to need more salt. So take it out, thaw it, heat it up, and then taste it before you serve it. More, thaw, more salt is going to be needed. Would you excuse me just a moment? I'll be right back. I want to get something special. I knew exactly where it was. I just want to end with a recommendation. I mean, wouldn't you think that Amy and I planned this? We did not. But I'm wearing my matching outfit to tell you how much I love this book. I've told you and now I'm telling you again. It's called A Good Meal is hard to find storied recipes from the deep south it is by amy c evans and martha hall Foose. and on the cover are is a nab nabs are little little salty snacks maybe cheese that you get wrapped in cellophane at a gas station uh a beautiful fish i think it's a catfish i wonder what kind of fish that is y'all tell me and at the bottom a rabbit's foot it's blue because we, we need all the luck we can get, right? Beautiful binding, an absolutely lovely grow grain ribbon in the middle. Um, recipes like sherry pot pie and Sam's smoked pork, smoked pork chop and apple pie. Louise's sardine crisps and Lenore Ann's Delta hot tamale balls. But my favorite page in the book is a chapter heading which has a beautiful one of Amy's beautiful paintings and it is Turk it, is, it looks a lot like my shirt which I didn't have at the time that I bought it but it is yeah, here we go it's the anytime sweets and I have a copy of this painting with lemon meringue pie because pie and Amy loves pie too. So I loved Amy and I love the work that she does and I love who she is in this world. And then it turns out we both love pie. So how lucky am I? So there's a rabbit's foot in that one and there's a wonderful writing on the back of it. So get this book. This is a treat for you. Okay, people, I had the best time. I hope you make this. Uh, tell me if you have any questions. Please check in, let me know that you're here. Uh, I will be here tomorrow and I'll be here Monday. Monday will be my last day for this every day cooking to help us get through this time. I felt a shift. Have you felt a shift? Not, not in a good way like, oh good, now we can go back to, no, not like that kind of shift. And in fact, I'm feeling too much of a shift. I am not in a hurry to go back. I'm not, I'm not ready to go and be, I think staying back, an, an abundance of caution. I think going out more is gonna mean that more people are sick. And I think that if we were more affected in our daily lives, so many of us, by seeing people the way that our New York people have seen people, it would make more sense that, yeah, it's really hard. It's hard not to do all the things that you love to do and be all the places that you wanna be. But um, it's a time where we need to think big. So big picture wise, I'm still home, I'm still cooking, and I'm gonna be around. But the every day, I'll see you tomorrow, I'll see you Monday, and we'll have a big time both days. I have something wonderful in mind for both days cooking, and I'll let you know tomorrow morning in case you wanna get groceries and cook along with me with what we're making tomorrow, okay? Thank you so much for joining me. It is an honor and a pleasure to spend time with you. And I will see you tonight at 7 o'clock when I read under the window if you want to hear a story from uh, Thailand. My pen rhyme means never mind. And I'll see you tomorrow right here at 2 o'clock if that's a good time for you to join me. Thank you so much for joining me at Nancy's Table. Bye now.